All right, boys, what's up? Got the Mall Super Commando Gar Saxon here for you today. Here's the kit. It was provided to me for free from Camino 3D Facility over on Instagram. I know you're jealous, but you're going to have to pay for yours. If you want to order, just send him a DM on Instagram. He'll hook you up. So let's go over what we're going to need for this project, for se. Obviously, you need the kit. Get that first and foremost. I'll also leave the, the link to uh, SkyLU 3D's uh, Patreon in the description as well. He's the one that originally designed this kit, so if you got your own 3D printer, you can just do that. Gonna need a body to put it all on. I'm going with Moff Gideon. The other kind of option you typically think of is the Deluxe Boba Fett. Those go for like 40 bucks right now. You can get this guy secondhand for like 15 on eBay, and honestly, I think it'd be way easier on this body. Plus, we're gonna need some super glue. I've, re or I've previously recommended extra power thick sauce over here. Works pretty good. But this one, the Loctite Super Glue, mm, this is the good stuff. I recently found this cream of the crop right here. All right, this is the stuff to get. It's a little expensive, but this is going to be my recommendation from now on. We're also going to need some green stuff. Uh, I don't know what the actual name for this stuff is, but I get it from Green Stuff World on eBay. Kind of expensive. I'm pretty sure alternatively you could probably just use some uh, hot glue from a hot glue gun. But I'm going to recommend this over it. I think it'll be a little easier to work with. Uh-oh. Oh well. We're also going to need some black fabric. Well, you could probably skip over this part, but I'm going to do it for the, uh, to attach the holsters. He's got some fabric action going on. And to go along with that fabric, I'm going to use some fray check. As the name implies, it helps stop the fraying. And then, last but not least, our number one tool going to be the Dremel, like usual. And if you're ever using a Dremel, get some safety protection. You don't want to be breathing in plastic particles. That shit sits in your lungs for the rest of your life. Don't want that. No good. All right, first step, we're going to want to get our Moff Gideon ready. I've already got mine ready. This is my display for the shelf. This is what you're going to want to do. All you got to do is take a little bit of... Uh, like a pot of boiling water, stick the figure in there for like a, a minute, minute 30. Just pull the bad boy apart right there in the center. That's all you really need to do. Alternatively, you could probably use a hairdryer. I don't have a hairdryer, so I use boiling water. And then we're just going to need to take off some of these uh, soft plastic bits, bits, the chest plate, the shoulder pads, and his little skirt. And I almost forgot. They've got the, uh, these are two little magnets that are going to be used for you can't even see them, too dark. Uh, they're two by six millimeter magnets. They're gonna be, or I'm gonna use them to attach his little shield, have it come on and off. All right, so first thing we're gonna do, we're gonna work on the chest plate. Oh, yeah, obviously you need to take his head off too. Forgot to mention that. So we got the front right there. Doesn't quite fit. I've already tried putting it all the way down and it sticks out a little bit, so we're gonna have to remove some material from the front of the ch chest with the Dremel, maybe a little bit with the back, but I'm gonna give that a go right now. Oh, yeah, that's more or less good where it's sitting. Show you went a little too hard on the front and back on the chest, and it wasn't very necessary. The emphasis, let's see, 
is going to be more so on the shoulders. That's definitely where the most amount of material needs to be removed in order to get this to fit right. And I actually went way higher than I needed to around the collar area. So if you want to keep that uh, textured detailing, avoid less or avoid more of the collar than I did. But that's not a big deal. I can fix it up with a file like this guy and it shouldn't be too noticeable once it's painted. Alright, now I'm going to move on to the belt. So for the belt, it's actually quite nice since this uh, center of the torso can come apart. It just slides on there. Look at that. So if you didn't want to do the uh, the fabric bits coming down to the holsters, you could just glue it on like that and you're good to go. But I'm, since I am doing that, I'm going to need to remove just a little bit of material on each side to fit that underneath. So feel free to skip over this bit if it didn't interest you, but I'm going to show you how I'm at least going to plan on how to attach these to those and get them uh, shaped correctly. So, well actually all I'm going to do right now is take these, you know, significantly larger pieces and glue them in so they're fitting flush with the inside of the, uh, the 3D printed part. And then we'll cut around it afterwards once it's where it's supposed to be. So while I wait for those pieces to dry, I'm going to uh, work on the thighs right now. And all we have to do is, you know, we have some of these uh, molded in folds of the cloth. We just got to kind of flatten those out a bit to get them to sit better. And then while we're at it, I've actually already done it on one knee, but I'm going to cut a little bit away uh, to make a good platform to put the knee pads on. So you can see what I did on this one. Can you see? Bring that over there. We're just cutting a little bit off of each side of the uh, pants that come down off of the thigh piece. A little chunk on each side. And just do a little fitment. We just need the, because uh, these L or knee pads are a little bit uh, narrow. We need to remove a little bit of the uh, leg in order to get them to sit more flush around the actual knee. And I'm going to use a little bit of that green stuff I mentioned earlier to kind of give it some height off of the knee. Because we're going to need that to get it to fit properly. You can see there's a gap right there. But so let's continue on with the uh, holsters real quick. So let's cut away some of this extra. These are purpose-made craft scissors. I'm pretty sure you could just use any old pair of scissors and you'd be fine. It's just right along the edge going all the way up along the contour of the uh, 3D printed part. Just like so. I think I'll have good enough. And then the same back here, along that back edge. And there we have that, and it curves around underneath the uh, belt. So they sit about right there, I'd wager. So we want to leave some under the belt. I'm going to cut it as much of a straight line as I can right there. That's our rough shape. I'm going to do the same on the other side. Actually, got an extra curving out a bit right there. 
That's probably good. So I'm gonna come up with something like that. We're gonna do the same on the other side. Oh, sorry, there we go. Same on the other side. And then real quick, I'm going to do the, um, well, I seem to have lost it. Hold on. All right, I found it. Fray check. So all you really have to do, you know, it's a liquid dropper bottle, essentially, just along the all the edges. So don't worry about anything fraying right now. We're going to put this stuff on to seal what's there in, and then we'll go back and cut the uh, frayed bits coming off of it. That way we're not pulling out strands and creating holes in it. Alright, next I'm going to work on dry fitting the shoulders. You can see on this one, he's kind of got a nice little groove on his uh, left shoulder for the pad to fit in. There's a lot of opening on the back, but again, that's what the green stuff is going to be for to kind of fill that in and give it a nice a solid surface to sit on. But for his right shoulder, we don't have that same sort of little crevice in the folds to put it into. So I'm going to just do a little bit of cutting to give it a better spot to sit. I'm liking where that's sitting. All I did, very slight cut, just right there. Not even maybe an eighth of an inch, sixteenth. So now that's done, we can move on to the lower hand guards, or gauntlets, I guess. So, sit right there, but the uh, current gloves are a little too thick. So all we really got to do is flatten the front and back side of it a little bit to get it to just clamshell over. So I did the same thing on the other side, and then as a little detail, I also uh, smoothed out the inside of the gauntlets because you have that weird kind of ripple pattern going on there. And anything, any of these little blemishes, we can always clean up with the X-Acto knife or uh, a hand file, something like that. So the last thing we have to do on the arms is just uh, smooth down these current gloves to make room for the hand covers. So let's check fitment. I just did the other hand. Yeah, this is flush enough. Alright, so that pretty much is done for the upper body. Oh, I didn't show this earlier. I did this forever ago. The Gar Saxon actually has a cut in the uh, so cut out on his collar. So I just did that with an X-Acto knife. One on each side, and then kind of shimmied it along the bottom. So two last steps before we start gluing everything together. So one thing I'm going to try and do, since I know I have the ability to reprint these if I fuck it up, is uh, embed one of these uh, small magnets into the actual gauntlet, so I can, uh, so it's not as noticeable that it's on there. If you didn't want to risk, you know, cracking this thing, cutting a hole straight into it. Honestly, I don't think it'd be the biggest deal if you just, you know, glued the magnet straight on the top. It's so small, I doubt you'd ever even really notice that it's there. But I'm going to give it a try, see if it's uh, doable, and see if, so you guys can see if you want to do it yourselves. And I'm going to be using one of these, uh, I think it's called a diamond polishing ball, something like that. It's right about uh, six millimeters across, so it should be a perfect fit or close to it. Not too bad. Definitely nerve-wracking though. You can see how small those pieces are coming off the top. 
So do it at your own risk. Honestly, I can't say I recommend it, but it will certainly look better. So the very last bit of cutting we're going to need to do is for the helmet. It comes cut out, but that pin is so small, I don't know of any Black Series figure that would fit that. Probably because it's, I'd imagine it's not meant for it, probably one of those uh, slimmer sort of anime type bodies that people like to use for soft good figures. But anyways, I'm going to use that same diamond cutting wheel to uh, really go to town on this. Definitely, if you haven't been wearing respiratory protection up to this point, now is the time. This is about the worst stuff and the highest concentration of stuff for this project of uh, particulates we're going to have floating around in the air. So when you do this, you want to definitely leave a good bit of uh, wiggle room in there because we're going to use hot glue to uh, create a new ball joint sort of uh, hole. I don't know. You can see how ridiculously large the helmet looks on that body without all the rest of the armor on. I'm sure it'll look fine once all the rest of the armor is actually on it. So let's see if our, uh, our fabric's done drying from that uh, fray check. So first thing I'm going to do is put the belt on. Reason for that, and the reason we haven't glued anything else on, is because when you we're going to have to rejoin these pieces together. So we're going to have to heat up this piece to allow the pin to go into it. And if we have 3D printed pieces on this, they have a tendency to crack and become a little bit more brittle when they're heated up. So I want to get those attached before I do any gluing, put any 3D printed pieces on. So let's work on getting the uh, the belt on so we don't have to worry about that later. Start with putting the holsters on. I'm going to glue it I guess about right there. Um, you can see because that line is where the belt's going to sit roughly. So I'm going to glue just below where the hip sole was so that's still usable and then glue this fabric on with a little light coat of or light layer of glue and put it flush against the waist right there. I realized I messed up for the For the fabric right here, shouldn't have uh, glued it to the side of the leg. Super limiting on the articulation. So instead, you know, don't glue that. And then before you put it underneath the belt, we're gonna make a loop out of uh, what's this eighth inch ribbon. So I cut it out about, or basically right at two and a half inches. And then we're gonna make a loop at two and a half inches. I'm gonna fold it over about uh, three eighths of an inch and glue it right there. And that glue it together to make a loop. And that should be enough room to then attach it you know right near the bottom of this and then just have it slide up and down the leg free like it is right now. All right, that's good there. So now, like I said, I'm gonna put this back on. So I go to boil water. All right, got that attached. Looks a little something like that. Nice. So let's get the chest plate on. I'm gonna focus on putting the glue just kind of on the shoulders, maybe on the upper back and chest. Like a glove. So let's go the 
bottom since these will be easy. The uh, shin guards, just no modification to leg really required. I'm just going to put it on these uh, glue on the inside of these two flaps on the sides. Wrap around the leg. I'm gonna turn that uh, the foot up so I don't block the articulation when I put this on. Wrap it around the center. Then the hand guard, hand covers, just a little dab in the center is all you need. Gauntlets, same thing as with the legs, mostly on the sides, on the shins, I should say. And then clamshell that bitch on there. Come on. So glue the backpack on last, that just, you know, sits flush right there since I'm worried about that bit breaking off while I'm handling it. So for the elbows and knee pads, I'm going to need a little bit of green stuff to uh, give more mass, I guess. So I'm noticing right now, though, where I'd originally planned to put it, it's not really going to work. We're going to have to put it lower down the arm, like right there. Is it fine? Yeah, it's not the biggest deal if it sits like that, right? Green stuff can fill in all the gaps. What about the other side? Oh, I'm telling you. Uh, yeah, I'm thinking I should probably bring those down a bit. So, breaking out the Dremel again. I don't think that'll do her just fine. So, what do we got left? So, we don't need to worry about those. Backpacks last. So, that leaves our magnets. So, that stuff's green stuff and hot glue. So, let's start with the green stuff. Alright, green stuff's cool. Hella sticky. Use it in a lot of modeling stuff, especially miniatures use this. For making all sorts of stuff but for us we're just gonna fill in some gaps so it's a two-part something epoxy I don't know uh, so you mix the two ends together and it becomes hella sticky especially on your fingertips as you knead it kneading meaning mixing them together you want one flat color um, 
If you don't want it to stick to your fingers, just put a little bit of water or like uh, petroleum jelly on your fingers, as gross as that is, and it'll help mitigate the sticking. Well, you see, I made significantly more green stuff than I needed to. So, didn't you know, need to make anywhere near what I did. So that's trash. Uh, the green stuff, we gotta let sit uh, basically overnight for it to harden. And every once in a while, the green stuff will, uh, once it's hardened, it'll lose its adhesion to the actual plastic. So if that happens, yeah, you know, just take a little bit of your super glue, glue it back on, should be good to go. So last thing, other than the jetpack, is uh, the helmet. So we're just going to take our hot glue gun. I've had that ready to go right here. Low heat, don't need it on high. And I'm going to wipe that tip off. We're just going to fill in the uh, socket right here and make a new, and then put it on the ball joint. Uh, if you don't want the ball joint to stick to the hot glue, rub some petroleum jelly, you know, uh, what is that, Vaseline? over it and it'll make it so it doesn't stick and it's easier to pull out. I don't really care, so I'm not going to bother. Don't want to fill it in too much, maybe two thirds of the way into the hole. And then right on top. And then you're going to want to hold it wherever it's at for a, a couple seconds while it dries. Or wherever you want it to be. For it to while it dries. Say right there is probably good. Put the magnet back on, let the hot glue dry for a second before I put it on, and so now I'm just going to kind of hold it here while I wait for it to dry. That's probably good. Alright, and then last thing while those finish solidifying, gotta put the backpack on. I guess not backpack, the jetpack, huh? Sorry, if Star Wars fan base don't scare me alive. And then, like usual, just hold it for a couple seconds. If I haven't mentioned it yet, the reason I really like the Ultra Drill is because this stuff dries in like 15 seconds. Versus that lot. The thick sauce takes about a couple, five minutes or so. Uh oh. Damn, I just ate my own words. It's not dry yet. That's a certified bra moment. I'll come back when it's dry.
All right, and there we have it, guys. Finished car, Saxon. Yeah, helmet doesn't look too bad. I think it's a little big, but it looks a lot better with the rest of the armor on. Voila. There you go. Probably do a painting showcase with it. Don't know if it'll be really a tutorial. Seems pretty straightforward for this guy. But anyway, have a good one, guys. That's it for today.